Hello everybody, this is Ron from Mikado USA. Um, today I'm going to make a video to show you how to, to um, take your NEO out, register it, um, get it connected to the computer, installing the key files, and also setting it up with a, with a DX18 um, radio. Um, shout out to Ralph Stutes who uh, shipped me his radio so I could actually make this video so everybody could see um, exactly how to set up a Spectrum radio to a NEO. And as you can tell, I have a V-Link Neo here, which is exactly the same. Uh, V-Link or non-V-Link, it doesn't matter which one. They all work with Spectrum, just like um, um, everything else. So um, let's see if I can position this camera a little bit. First thing you got to do is you got to get the Neo registered to your account. So the first thing I'm going to do is get the Neo powered up and connected to the computer. And you'll see when I have the boot plug installed in the sensor port, which by the way, you can never ever plug power in the sensor port. That's the one port. If you plug power into a Neo, you will fry it immediately. Um, and it's not a warranty issue. That's just like crashing a brand new car getting into a telephone pole. Um, this is the, US, the uh, USB connected to the computer. Last thing to do is power it up, which I can power it on any port on the servo side, which is fine. And you see it, it goes, um, it starts to flash white, which is perfect. And when I do that, I go over here and I open my V-Bar Control Manager. And when I do that, you'll see uh, the new uh, manager has the virtual box helper if you want to install it, but I don't have to do that on the computer, so it's not necessary. So what it does is it updates the, the firmware, which you see professional is current. And then you hit this Applications button here. And when you do that, it takes you to vstavy.info. And then you would click right here where it would normally say Register Here in red. You would click that register here, and then it would add it to your account as if you see on here, uh, you see the green check mark means it's actually a part of my account now. And you can look down here, and you'll see that a V-Bar Professional is just on it, and I can load other stuff like Copter or V-Plane or things like that. So, uh, And I can buy Rescue uh, if I wanted to do that. But right now, we're just going to run with this one as professional as it is. So it's on my account. So at this point, now you slide over to, over to Administration right here, and then My Devices. And when you click on my devices, you'll notice that the one VBAR Neo is in green. Um, that means that it's the newest key files available and you won't have to worry about anything else. So every other VBAR control or VBAR Neo, excuse me, VBAR Neo that's on my account will also work with this. What I'm going to do is install the key file. So first thing you're going to do is go down here to key file right below the, the serial numbers. You'll see where it says download here. I click download here. And then at, at the bottom, it says I want to do it. You want to hit save. And then you want to view downloads because that's the easiest way to get to your downloads and you can see what happens. And then when I do that, I hit open folder and that'll get me over to um, the actual downloads folder so you don't have to worry about the weird stuff happening. Okay, so right here, keys.sto, I need to take that and I'm going to move it to the desktop. That way it's easy for me to find. And I don't have to worry about looking for it when I go to install it where it needs to go. All right, so I'm gonna close this down so you can see the path of how I get everything else done. All right. And then let's close this down. And I don't need this guy anymore. Okay. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power down my Neo. It doesn't need to be powered up right now. So I'm gonna plug power on that guy and let it go. All right, now this is where you install it. Um, you have to find your C drive. If you don't know how to find your C drive on Windows 10, if you look down here at the bottom little icon on the bottom, it looks like a, a folder with a blue, like a little, I guess a little stand or whatever going through it. If you click on that guy right there, and you'll on the left hand side, you'll you'll scroll down here, you'll see C drive, Windows C. You click C drive, and then you go up to program files x86, and then you go down to VBAR control right there. You click VBAR control, and if you look in here, you see a bunch of stuff in here. When you drag the key file into this folder, it doesn't have to go into any specific spot. You just drag it into this area and it'll automatically put it where it goes. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to grab it, drag it down, just somewhere in this is, it says move to bar control, just let it go. And it's asking me if I want to do it. You hit continue, yes. And now it's going to move VBAR, the keys STO into that spot. You see it's actually installed into the VBAR control folder under C drive, program files x86, VBAR control. All right, so that's done. Now, all I do is I open my VBAR Neo software. Okay. Now, when I do that, um, sometimes you'll get where you have to install the drivers. And um, 
Hopefully that comes up with this one because then I can show you how to do that as well. But if it doesn't, I can go through the steps and show you how to do it anyway. Okay, so I can see if I can power this Neo up one-handed here. I need to take the boot plug out, first of all. Boot plug is only for when you're doing software updates um, through the VBAR Control Manager. When you're trying to connect to the PC um, for the, the setup software, you do not use the boot plug. Okay, let's go ahead and plug this guy up here. And what I do, you hear it dink that it dink, but it doesn't have a connection up there, which is exactly what I expected. That means the drivers need to be installed. So I'm gonna show you how to do that too. It's actually pretty much the same thing when you when you get to the device manager to show you how to do that. So when you go down here to the Windows icon on the bottom left over here, you right click that guy and device manager should be an option, which is right there. You go to device manager, you click it, and then it'll open up the computer's device manager. And the first thing you see is VBAR Neo right there with a yellow triangle next to it. That means that the drivers are not installed properly. So what you do is you go up here and you right click that guy and the first option is update driver. You're going to hit update driver. Now you have two choices. You can search automatically or browse my computer. You do not want to search automatically because it will not find it. So you hit browse my computer and then that way you can tell it exactly where it's going to go. Now right now it's already populated. It says uh, VStay V5.3 driver which is not where we need to go. So we're going to change the location. So we're going to hit this browse to the right here. We're going to hit browse. And then we're going to go to the same place we were before, C drive, which is here. And then program files x86, which is already open. You can see the things down there already open below. We'll scroll down. And then we're going to go to VBAR control, not VBAR, not VSTAPE, but VBAR control. You click that and it opens all the things below it. And then what you're going to do is just click on driver one time. Don't double click it. Just hit it one time. It opens it up, but just leave it there and then hit OK. And what that does is now it says C drive, program files x86, VBAR control slash driver. That's where it needs to be. All right, so now you're gonna hit next and it's gonna install the drivers. The drivers are successfully installed, it's good to go. I'm gonna close this down. Lo and behold, I am connected to the software. So that's perfect. All right, so now the V-Bar is connected to the software. If you look at the V-Bar itself, it's flashing red and green. That doesn't mean anything. That just means it's looking for V-Bar control to, to, um, to um, connect to. So this is actually a good thing. So when you see this, you don't freak out when you see that happening and nothing actually has changed. Okay, the very first thing you wanna do is you wanna hit setup and you wanna start a new setup. You hit okay. And then you wanna create version six new setup. And when you do that, that basically wipes the Neo clean and allows it to view a fresh new setup, okay? So now you're gonna to go to the receiver tab, which is next, and you're gonna tell it how are you gonna bind. Okay, so what I have here are two DSMX satellites right here, all right? And I already have the radio, which is a DX18. This guy's already set to 11 milliseconds. So what we're gonna, I mean, excuse me, 22 milliseconds. I apologize, 11 milliseconds. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get this guy set up to go for that. So what you choose is you go to the V-bar control over here, hit the drop down box, and Spectrum Satellites DSMX in 11 milliseconds, one or two. You click that, and then you'll see a box on here that says prepare for binding. Okay, so we're not gonna do, we're gonna click that box. We're not gonna do anything just yet though, okay? So now we need to get the NEO prepared for the, uh, the, the satellites to be able to connect and uh, power it up. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get this, this cable out of the way first. Is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the satellites into the Neo. So hold just one second here. I'm gonna put this down. Install the satellites into the Neo. Yes, it's powered up. It doesn't matter right now because we're not doing anything. It's just sticking them in. Plug those into the side of the VR, the Neo. All right, good to go. You notice they're not doing anything. They're not flashing or anything. But once you hit that prepare binding we talked about before, that's going to allow me to go and interrupt power and then reconnect it within one second, and that'll get the, the satellites flashing what I need to do in order to buy. First thing I need to do is get this radio on the model that it needs to be on because um, it has to be on the correct model in order to see it. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to select a brand new model in this radio. So I'm going to turn it on. 
know it's kind of hard to see the screen there with that. And he also flies a different mode here. As you can see, it's a little different. All right, so I'm going to go down here go down to the, the system setup. Yes, I want to hit that. And then I want to hit model select. All right. I don't want any of these guys. He's got a bunch of them. You can see he's got a bunch of them there. So I'm just going to pick a new one, which is 20 heli. Click that. And then model type. I want to make sure it's a helicopter. It is. Okay. Reset the data. Model name, if you want to name it. If you don't want to name it, you don't have to, but you can. Uh, swatch plate type. It needs to be set to one servo normal, which is what this is. Uh, right now, it's set to normal. As you can see on the bottom, that's one servo. Um, flight mode type, um, that's going to be when you can set the flight modes, we can change that if we need to um, in order to accommodate the NEO. So we'll, we'll come back to that if we need to. All right. Um, channel assignment, same thing. You can change the different channels to whatever you want it to be on the output ports. So that gives us a little flexibility as far as setting up the NEO as well. Uh, trim setup's not necessary. Telemetry, um, that's not necessary. Frame rate, I want to check that guy. So I was wrong. It was set to 22 milliseconds, but I chose 11. So we're going to change this guy to 11 milliseconds. All right. DSMX, X plus is inhibited. And hit list. Okay. So now you see where it says bind. Um, we're going to leave that right there for now. All right. I'm going to put the radio down. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to interrupt power on this Neo and reconnect it within a second. And that's going to get me into the bind mode for the radio. Okay, so let's do this as quick as I can. Alf, back on. Now you see this, the satellites are blinking fast. That means the radio is ready to receive the bind. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on bind, and I'm going to move it about three feet away. That way it, it doesn't interrupt with the Wi-Fi and doesn't cause any issues. All right, so I'm going to hit bind, and I'm going to go over here to bind. I hit bind already, and I'm going to hit it and move away. You see the satellites are blinking slowly now. They're on solid and I am connected. All right, so now I have connected the radio to the satellites and also the V-Bar, the NEO. So now I can start my, my general setup. Now the first thing you do is you check on the radio. If you look on the screen, here, let me turn the, the NEO around here or turn the, the screen around so you guys can see that. What you'll see is when I'm moving the sticks up and down, well, that's kind of hard with this minimum one, but you'll see the, the collective on the screen moving over there, moving right and left. You see ailerons going. You also see the run, idle, bank, all that's going up and down. Okay, so we'll get that all fixed up as well. But right now, I'm um, going to check your elevator. That seems to be working, and the tail's working. That's great. All right, so the default channels are working like they should. So now we're going to go through and we're going to set the switches to get everything to work like we want it to work. Okay, so in the V-Bar, what you need is basically the V-Bar Neo is setting up your radio much like a V-Bar control radio works. So the functions in your radio, the throttle function, the gyro function, the um, um, aux 2 function in the radio, they're going to control different things in the Neo. And right now, because this is a professional, uh, just a pro um, uh, Neo, it doesn't have rescue and it doesn't have um, in nitro, which I don't have the nitro enable. Which, by the way, I think we should go ahead and do that so I can do one extra step and you guys can see it. So I'll skip over to Gov here and I'm going to change this from ESC to nitro and then um, reset that. That way you'll, you'll see the extra channel that has to be made. Go back to the receiver tab and now you see the throttle cut is on the screen as well. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is the first thing I do, I need to choose three functions. There's a bunch of them in the radio. The throttle curves is a function, which is awesome. Gyro function works real well. The auxiliary, like aux one, aux two, aux threes work. Um, there's also um, on the radio itself, uh, if you want to do rescue, the trainer function works real well. Um, so for rescue, just because it's momentary. The DX18, uh, I don't think any, all these switches are hard switches or not. None of them are, are momentary. So the only momentary switch on this trick this radio is the, the trainer switch, so that's what I would use for rescue because it allows the rescue to work and at the same time reset so that it's not gonna be um, a problem getting it to work later on. All right, so uh, first thing I need to do, you notice I move the stick up and down. Um, I'm sorry, the, 
this stick up and down, and you see on the screen the run and the collective are moving because they're assigned to the same channel. Basically, the throttle's assigned to the collective stick as well. So that's why it's seeing two different things. All right, so if you look in the, in the V-Bar, the, the program, channel six is collective and channel one is motor, but they're both working with the same stick. That means they're both assigned to the same thing. All right, so what we want to do is we want to eliminate the, the throttle from being um, assigned to the sticks the way it is. All right, we just want to use the throttle function as a throttle function and that's it, okay? So let's see, I right, go to the radio here. We're gonna go down to the setup menu again. Yes. All right, now we're gonna go back to flight mode setup. Remember that flight mode thing we did before? Okay. Right now it's set on switch G and switch two and, uh, uh, excuse me, switch one is on G and then two is hold and then inhibit and all that little stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave the flight modes set there. I just need to know what switch that is. So I can set it. Let's say I want to make it, um, I want to make this, um, this over here is my flight mode switch, which is switch B. B is in boy, I think. Um, if you look on the radio, it tells you what it is. So yes, it's switch B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that over to B. B, B, B. Good Lord, there's a lot of options here. There we go, switch B. All right, switch two, same thing. Move it to switch B. Oh, switch two for flight mode. No, I don't want to do that. I want to leave this the the only one switch. So I'm going to inhibit this. Dude, this thing gives you so many different options. All right, good. All right, so that's normal one two. All right, so you see the flight modes are normal one and two. All right. So now when I when I move the when I move the stick up and down, my collective stick up and down. Well, when I get out of here, it's gonna work here. Okay. All right. So now, now we need to get the uh, the collective and the throttle isolated from two different things. All right. So what I want to do is I want to set on my normal mode. I'm gonna go to my throttle curves in the radio. And in normal mode, I'm gonna set my normal mode to all zeros, okay? Okay, get there. We got all zero. Okay, so what that does is it, it starts the, the throttle to be at zero and it allows the NEO to see three different options, okay? Normal mode is zero. I'm gonna go to mode to uh, up to uh, one, idle up one, and change that to 50% all the way across. You don't need any kind of crazy curves to do it because you're just turning things on and off inside the radio. And now I want to go up to um, two and I want to change that to 100% all the way across. Skipped one. So now, flight mode one, two, and all those guys are set. Excellent. All right, good go. All right, so now, go back to the list. Now what happens is, if you look, I'm moving my throttle stick up and down, and now it's only working the collective because I've basically taken the, the, the curves out of the, the functionality that are only working on the switch now. So when I hit this switch, right now it's in bank one, or it's in normal mode, which is motor stop, okay? Or I can I can change it from bank one to bank two to bank three. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. If I go to idle, which is the middle position, you see right now it says bank one or idle. And if I hit this again, it goes to run. Okay, now let's say that's the motor switch right there. That's not what I want to be in my motor switch. I want that to change 
my head speeds. Well, that'd be the bank switch that you want to make that operate. But right now, it's only working the, the, the motor switch, right? Well, all you have to do is go in the V-bar and change the channel that it's assigned to, and it'll work whatever you want. So now, I'm going to go back to the V-bar program and see that channel 1 right there is working. Well, bank switch is number 5, so I'm going to change that 5 to a 1. Uh, I'm going to go back here, delete, where is that? Backspace, change that to a 1. Hit enter. And then I'm going to change this 1 up here to a 5, just so I don't have two things working at the same time on that same channel. All right, so now it's in back, bank one, bank two, bank three. So now that's working my bank switches. It's not working the motor, it's working the bank switches, which is awesome. So throttle curves are now working the bank switches. So now I need another function in the radio in order to work the motor switch, the, the, the throttle hold is what it's called um, for everybody else. Then the Germans call things different, but they, they all work the same thing. The bank switch is the same thing as your idle ups. The motor switch is the same thing as your throttle hold. The, the benefit of having the throttle hold where it is, it, uh, how it works as far as the, the being a, a motor switch is that in the middle you have an auto rotation arming. So you don't have to set something totally up, it's already there, so you need a three position switch to work. So I'm gonna do this switch on the right side up here, which is looks like it's switch G. Uh-oh, all right. And now I, I'm gonna, I want it to be switch G, so I need to assign a function in the radio that's going to make that switch work and give me an output on on the the the, uh, the receivers. So I'm going to choose the gyro function. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to gyro, hit enter. All right. Now I'm going to turn it on first, and I got to assign it to whatever switch it is, which is switch G, which is what I said. All right. Now what that does is it gives me three positions. You see when I when I flip this switch, you see it goes from one to two to three. Okay, so those three positions are working, which is really, really, uh, really awesome how you can see that working. So what I'm gonna do is this position one, I'm gonna make it go up to where it is, and I'm gonna make it negative 100. All right, so it is the complete extreme end on one side. I'm gonna go to the next one, and I'm gonna leave it at zero, because that's the center point, and then I'm gonna go to the other one and make it positive 100. So now I got it on switch G and it's on the, it's on the gen, it's going to be on the gear channel is what it says in the radio that it is. Now, where is that? I don't know where that is. So let's go find it. So if you go to the servo monitor screen, let's see where that guy is. I think it's in the, the setup menu. If not, we'll go find it. So I just had it. All right, so roll over servo monitor screen. Okay, so now when I flip this switch, you got to see something's going to be moving inside the radio. Okay, so look right here. The gyro right here is moving. Whenever I flip this switch, the gyro thing is moving up, through, up and down. So all you do is count from left to right. One, two, three, four, five. Channel five is going to be my gyro function. Okay, now luckily we had already changed it to channel five in the radio. So if you look at the V-bar program now, when I flip this from stop from there to put to doom, now it's going from run to idle to stop in the V-bar program. If you guys can see that, Let's see if I can turn this around a little bit more. So stop, idle, run. So I pull it to me and it's run. Back is off. Now, if I want to reverse that and it's not working the way I want it to be, if it's backwards, all you have to do is go back to the, the gyro menu. And at the top position, change it to a positive 100 and change the bottom position to a negative 100. And that'll reverse the switch for it. So now instead of this being um, the stop, it'll be the run. And then this will be uh, stop. So it, you'll have you want to do the same thing with the banks. You can just change the positioning of where the actual numbers are in the radio. And that'll change how that works. All right. Last thing is throttle cut. So I need a function in the radio to work the throttle cut in the V-bar. Okay. So um, let's let's see. Let's go. What else can we find here? How about um, we'll go to let's say aux two. Um, oh no, let's let's go to auxiliary uh, one or three aux three. How about that? Because what that'll do is that'll allow you to still use the tail gain, which you see the tail gain can be control control from aux two. Um, we'll leave that. And we'll make auxiliary three the um, the to operate the throttle cut. Okay, so we'll go to in the radio. 
we got to go up to um, the adjustment menu and we need to go to the auxiliary. So let's go subtrim, reverse, speed, item, balance. No, we don't need all that stuff yet. Hold on. Let's go to where I was. Aux 3. All right, so you see that right there. You can change it up and down to how you want to adjust it. Now, what I want to do is I want to make one side um, one side negative 100 and the other side positive 100. And that'll allow the um, um, the, the radio uh, to send a signal to the V-bar, which will tell it, okay, off or on, okay? So what I need to do is I don't want to be in the travel adjust. Um, let's go... Is it absolute? No, that's something else. I don't need that. Okay, it is the travel adjust I need to be in. So let's go down to aux three. And I need to assign that to a switch. So let's go back to the adjustment menu, or the setup menu. And we need to go down to the, oh, so you guys can't see it, I apologize. Um, we need to go down to channel assignment. And we're gonna change aux three. We're gonna leave that on aux three, or we can change it to where we wanna put it. Which, which aux three still works out, but we need to find out what channel that is. So we'll leave it there, but we need to assign it to a switch. So let's go next. Channel output, configuration, aux three. So this is on the right knob. We're gonna change that to, let's make it um, throttle cut right here, which is switch E. So we'll, sorry, I keep getting out of focus here. We'll go over to switch E. All right, so throttle cut is, uh, the auxiliary three is now on switch E. That should work that guy right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna get back to the main setup. Now what I wanna do is go look at this front, the monitor screen here. Okay, so you see aux three is being operated. Right now it looks like it's got aux two and aux three on one channel. It doesn't really matter because we can separate those later. But we count from left to right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So channel eight is aux three. So in the V-bar program, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna change that one, give a mouse to work, to an eight. Oh, well, you gotta put eight in there, not slash eight. There we go. All right, so now off, active. So that kills, the, that's the throttle kill. Now the throttle kill's working, that's off, and that's on. And if it's backwards, you go down into the trial, the channel adjustment. You go here, which um, I'll show you how to do that real quick. You go to travel adjust for aux three. Now it's got one side. See, it says 100 and 100 there. So what we can do is we can change this to zero, and then this. Oh, no, no, I apologize. I'm so sorry. This is not how you do that. You move this, move this back to 100 to where it was. And all you have to do is revert this channel because it's just a simple channel. You leave it at 100. All you got to do is go to server reversing and reverse that channel. Okay, so let's do that. Let's go up to reverse. All right, go down to aux 3. Reverse it. So now this is off. That's active. That's throttle kill. That's off. So... That's how you assign it. So if you look in the V-bar program now, we got our motor switch over here, stop and run, okay? We have our bank switch over here, and we have a throttle cut right here. It's all set. So if I wanted to do the same thing with the rescue, all I would do is choose another function in the radio, which I could choose aux two or aux one or whatever, and I could actually do exactly the same thing I just did. I go in the radio, I assign it to whatever function I want it to be, and that'll make it work, okay? So now all the switches are set, which is 90% um, of the work, everything is done. Now you need to calibrate your transmitter. So now I got the switches set, I'm gonna go hit continue and I need to calibrate the sticks. So um, right now the collective is all the way down, it says 99, at the top it's 99. Um, aileron right, left and right is both 99, those are both good. 99, 99, 99, 99. Now, Let's say you got an, it was said it was um, 97%. You need to adjust it a little bit. All you would do is you go in the radio and you go to the the um, tr 
travel adjust right here to whatever channel it would be. Let's say aileron, okay? Uh, let's, let's do collective. Let's go to pitch down here. And you wanted to get it to 100, you would take that and you would move this number up until it's at 100 in the V-bar program. Right now it says 105 because it went a little too far. Bring it down until it says 100. Okay, and then you move the stick down. Do the same thing. It says 100. Good to go. And the same thing, you hold the the, 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 the aileron. See, it's one of you. We got that one done, so let's do ailerons right here. Hold it to the right. You move that number until it says 100. Move it to the left. Move it until it says 100. Good to go. Now let's do the... Um, I'm gonna have to go off screen to do this one real quick. Um, this is gonna be the elevator. Move it till it says 100. Move it up until it says 100. Perfect. All right, and now the rudder, or the, um, I'm sorry. The, yeah, the rudder. This thing's, the transmitters are weird. All right, so move it to 100. Left, move it to 100. All right, perfect, all right, so now, you look, everything says 100 and 100 on top to bottom. Um, the centers are, are what we're working on now. Right now, everything should say center. Um, when you put the stick in the center, everything should be zero. And it is with this radio already. Uh, if it were off, all you would do is you go to the sub trim and you would adjust the sub trim until that number said zero on all the surfaces. Um, once the sub trim has got it, you got the direction set and they're correct as well. So the left and right, like if you move the stick to the right, you see on the aileron it says left on the screen, all right? So it's backwards. So you go into under aileron, or you gotta go back up, uh -oh, put it back to 101. All right, now I need to go back up to um, server reversing, and I need to re reverse my aileron. That's all right, so that's backwards, so let's reverse that one. All right, so right is right, left is left, Elevate, uh, collective is right, my, uh, Rudder to the right is backwards, so we're gonna go and adjust the rudder. We flipped that one, okay? So now I change that rudder right, rudder left, elevator pull, pull this down. When you pull it down, pull down, and then push up. So, okay, so all the surfaces are doing the right direction, the endpoints are correct, and the servo centers are correct. So um, that's just negative 27 because the collapse stick's moving. But um, it's ready to go, and then you can check your switches one more time in the V-bar program if you flip the switches around. Uh, you'll see that on the V-Bar program it says active for the throttle cut. It's got the motor switch here, and it's got the bank switch over there. So that's a basic setup, guys, to show you how to set your radio up with the DX18 or any um, um, Spectrum radio. It all works the same way. Um, some give you a little bit more functionality, like the DX18 will allow you to change um, a switch to a function. Some don't allow you to do that, so you have to choose the function that's assigned to that switch in order to work it. But it's the same setup. Everything works exactly the same. Um, if you got any questions, hit me up at Mikado USA uh, at the, the, tech, the tech line, one eight four 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 Mikado extension 2. Or I'm on Facebook under Ronald Thomas or uh, Instagram under uh, Laughing Still. And that's the same name I have on all the forums as well. So it's good talking to you guys. Catch me next time.